Hello world, welcome to part two of Century of the Masses. So, the documentary Century of the Self is a story. It's what Adam Curse is really good at. It's a story with many characters and how their ideas were used in marketing to create the consumer. Uh, Kanye says in his tweet, where he tweets out this documentary, um, that before Bernays, Americans bought things based on, um, you know, for important reasons, rational reasons, and then were uh, led by um, all these minds, these marketers and psycho psychological techniques. Uh, they were manipulated into becoming consumers who uh, first conformed and then uh, expressed themselves through buying things. Well, that's a very good story, and um, I'd like to supplement it by looking at not the people or the agencies themselves, the uh, research institutions and uh, the marketers, but let's look at um, the 20th century itself. Like, Curtis manages to give a very good account in four hours of something that spans decades, but you can't squeeze a century into four hours regardless. So, I want to kind of fill in some parts. Um, what about the media itself? Like, the fact that uh, radios and telephones were only just entering the house at the beginning of the century, that uh, televisions entered the house in the 1950s, that uh, presses were only good enough to, um, you know, create glossy photo magazines or create n newspapers today with lots of pictures and graphics within the 20th century, right? So the fact that we're surrounded by all this stuff has a much bigger effect in changing how much someone can change from being a rational consumer to being someone who can be uh, led along by pictures and words and whatnot. If you want to understand people, you have to understand the environments they grew up in. That was the lesson of Marshall McLuhan. Now, McLuhan was an English professor. And a lot of his ideas, like, they're not scientific. They're not empirical. I'm not reading him stuff in order to get, you know, an uninformed opinion of, you know, of the scientific variety. It's more like a holistic whole philosophy of how to look at the world. And uh, he looked at the world through words, through the written word, as a form of which contains the spoken word, right? The um, phonetic alphabet, abacada, by taking the sounds of the spoken word and putting them into symbols, um, created a new way to look at speech and uh, created a medium which could explain and contain all the other mediums or be a part of it, right? Like, that's kind of how he saw things. So, for McLuhan, each media has its own sensory closure, which means as you're exposed to it and you learn to, you know, read it or work with it or interface with it, your mind sort of organically closes about it. Like, I think the way that uh, an ear, um, once you pierce it, it has to uh, heal around uh, the stud or the gauge, right? Or um, think about when you go to hug someone. Like, you know, hey man, I love you man, you go in to hug them, right? And you close about each other and there's nothing between you, right? It's just aww, right? Well, what electronic media do, or what media does between people, is it allows them to communicate, but there is something between you. If you're talking to someone on the phone, it's just your voice, your words being transmitted, not your picture, not where you are. You, the two of you can't, you know, be seeing the same thing unless you're calling each other from like across the street, right? Um, there's something between you and your person who is the f focus of who you want to talk to. You're talking to them. You're not on the phone for the joy of using a phone. You're on the phone to communicate with, to, you know, talk to someone. But the medium which is between you is shaping that communion between those people and you equilibrate ar ar around it. So McLuhan's whole thing was that the media itself changes people, changes how they think, changes how they get ideas and how they think about stuff. Um, so like lots of people talk about the media today. Oh, the media is blah, 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 blah. Well, like the media, when you talk about the media, you're talking about people. You're talking about, oh, this journalism is, uh, you know, slanted or, uh, oh, this media, right? You're talking about the people creating it, the people running it. But no, no, no. Like, first, you got to look at the media as the actual physical material reality that you're in. The fact you have a phone in your pocket or that you're reading a piece of paper or that you're reading a book. That's the media itself. It's, the, you know, the physical objects which contain within them other media. There's spoken word in the written word, and there's written word in the book, right? McLuhan would talk about how um, television, the content of television is movies, and the content of movies is a stage play, and the content of a stage play is a story, right? Um, 
media within media within media and when you close about the, co the, the content when you're thinking about the person who you're talking to on the phone you're not thinking about the media itself the telephone itself you're just using it because you got used to it it's become sort of um, invisible and that's when it uh, it, it uh, affects human nature so if you really want to understand media you have to understand them as art and that includes advertising the techniques of advertising um, the, the slogans and the catchy phrases and whatnot those are um, employ the techniques of poetry that evolved over centuries you know the way Shakespeare was able to create meaning in the words in his plays is the same way that uh, you know so-called marketers can put subliminal messages into their advertisements it wasn't invented in the 20th century it's the way that technology has allowed these things to uh, create our um, advanced environment, our mediated environments, right? Um, advertisers, like advertisements with photos, like glossy magazine photos or the shots in a movie, use the rules of composition which, you know, were developed with painting and which were used in photography, right? Like the whole history of art is necessary for understanding and analyzing um, media today. Uh, to just focus on the content itself is to sort of to surrender the prerequisite knowledge of uh, the whole historical, um, you know, understanding for how this stuff grew up and how it entered our lives and how the actual technology itself has evolved and changed with the ways of conveying meaning. To just look at psychoanalysis from invented by Freud or um, motivational research f from um, Ernest Dichter uh, is to just skim the surface just to look at, you know, um, the superficial. So, I love the century of the self, but it's sort of the nature of the medium as a documentary to burn through a bunch of things in a coherent narrative. Um, you have to understand, of course you can't explain the 20th century in four hours. So, when you're watching it, you gotta think about uh, what it has, ne by necessity, has to leave out. And uh, this is just... Uh, a little bit of what I think is missing. All right, next week we're going to look at the way it layers personality, which is interesting. Um, there's lots of ways to look at personality, but the way personality was looked at at places like Esalon, where where you got to chip away your defenses to reveal the true the true you inside. Like uh, I'd like to talk about that a bit more. Um, I'm not sure when that when that episode is coming out, but uh, when it does, you'll find it if you're subscribed. All right, till then, uh, this is Clinton saying goodbye. Talk to you later.